story was uh, state of origin. It's a big deal in Australia. It's the sort of showpiece of rugby league where the two states, Queensland and New South Wales, who hate each other now more than ever after the pandemic, let me tell you. Uh, yeah. uh, the, the great Queenslander, Jonathan Thurston, was retiring and Rose opined that it would be wonderful if Thurston ran on to his final game in the maroon jersey of Queensland and did a heel turn and stripped off and played for the Blues and won the Origin Series. And we were lucky enough that uh, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling superstar Robbie Eagles, who, of course, is, you know, really one of the core elements of PWA, was listening that evening. And he reached out to Rose, I believe, via Twitter and said, hey, look, it's just great to hear you guys talking respectfully and entertainingly about pro wrestling come to a show. And then, you know, Rose pioneered, I think he was lucky enough to be at the show where Osprey and Eagles wrestled in Paddington. And uh, off the back of that, he said, Chris, you must come. And so we headed out to Parramatta RSL on an extremely hot January evening in 2018. So it's, uh, you know, getting up to almost three years ago now. And yeah. uh, like everyone who sees PWA and, and great local Australian product, as someone who's sort of, I guess, you know, steeped in all that history that I was droning on about just a moment ago, I went in with my guard up. Sounds, sounds like I'm on The Bachelor, doesn't it? And, uh, <laughs> and I, I really was so impressed by what I saw that evening. Uh, and, and, and I said to Rose, how great is this? You know, this is terrific. I'm coming again for sure. And timing was in our favour because uh, PWA was just in the throes of securing Matt's Watts as its spiritual home, which it has been, and, and I'm sure will be again as we come out of the pandemic. And they were doing uh, sort of synced digital commentary to the film stuff they were doing and they were developing this great film crew and they were just looking for people who'd be prepared to commentate and that would go on their paywall. And so I think, you know, we sold our soul for Rock and Robbie. I think from memory might have been that first show and uh, they were really just taking a punt on us. And, it, you know, it wasn't live streamed. If we were terrible, there was no downside. We were terrible. There was a downside, but they decided to persist with us, and it went from there. And and uh, you know, I must go back at some stage and hear how uh, bad we were because uh, you know we really were near fights, and w we've we've learned lots in that period. Most of all, that the most important figure in PWA is, of course, the, the officials like referee Nick, who I've got here on my. <laughs> But you know, you you mentioned you know you've never done any pro wrestling commentary before, correct? Like this was That's something correct. complete. Yeah. Well, how just, did you just endless hours in front of my TV at home by myself, Piers? But we don't talk about that because my therapist says it's probably something I should move on from. But yeah. Hey man, haven't we all sat in front of a TV and called a wrestling match before, bro? It's like my my wife actually asked me, "Do I ever like take one of these belts down and and walk around the house with it around my waist when no one's home?" And I'm like. No, that would be silly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, <laughs> but I Did think that clothed or naked, because if it was naked, then of course you've walked around with the belt. <laughs> oh, please come on now. How do you think we got number three? Exactly. Um, <laughs> but you know, so how did you prepare going into that 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 first lot of like recordings I, for, I, for doing pro wrestling? Look, when I think about it, uh, if you you know, we talk about how the promos attracted me as a kid. The, the thing when I started to watch the American content that we were seeing was I loved the commentary, right? And I immediately in my mind go to Gorilla Monsoon and Jesse the Body Ventura, right? You know, you've got Gorilla doing the play-by-play -play, basically, um, in, you know, it, 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 on, the, on the side of the right and then Ventura giving this strong counterpoint voice. And I said... First of all, that guy's going to become governor of Minnesota. I will bet my life on it. And and secondly, that repartee just absolutely entranced me. And I thought Vince McMahon was an excellent commentator as well because he was so um, – they, they, they used that word verisimilitude. He was just so truthful about what he was saying that it carried you along. And I, I, I avoid trying to mimic anyone, but occasionally I do give Ventura a shout-out in the call and I say, you know, I'm impressed, McMahon, and I don't impress easy, right? <laughs> and, and and to me, and then, you, you know, Heenan came in in commentary, and I guess I've spent a lot of time listening to what I like. 
And yeah. uh, and then I guess what you get out of that is saying, well, if you're in that situation, what's your style and, and, and what do you want to be? And I know Rose and I, when we first started, we're a little bit too jokey and, yeah. and we probably didn't quite have the verisimilitude. And, of course, the other thing that's a huge setback is that, you know, we're coming off the back fence in terms of the incredibly deep knowledge that the wrestlers have about the moves and so forth, you know. There, there are all the range of moves and then there are the variants of the moves and then there are the moves like in professional skating that get named after the person who creates them and then the brand names that people impose. And we probably were smart enough not to try to call what we didn't know and just yeah. uh, just try and convey the excitement, tell the story as we see it. Uh, yes, uh, our poor attempts at humour has always been part of it. And then if the company was open to us to learn and to tell us more, we would just, and we have put our sort of, you know, we're open for business sign. And I think from the perspective of the PWI wrestlers, and I'd agree with Rose, and let me tell you, I never agree with Rose, but I agree with what he said in your interview, which is quite rightly, I think that the wrestlers were somewhat aware of who we were, what our motivation was, why were we doing it? Was it just something that we thought would be a bit of promo for us in the station or whatever? I hope now, three years in, they, you know, that we respect the profession, we love what we do, and we love them. And so, I have to be honest. I have the easier job because I'm the, you know, Rose does the play-by-play, uh, and I'm trying to, I guess, represent w- w- almost what the casual viewer is seeing to a degree. Uh, the color. Yeah, the color. Uh, but uh, it's not. Uh, it, I'd be lying if I said it was difficult. And, I, you know, you listen back and you see the mistakes and whatever, but you're just constantly going, this is a privilege. And and I think one of the things that Rose and I do reflect on is say, how did this ever happen, man? This is just like such a, a fortuitous opportunity for us. And uh, there hasn't been one minute of, it, a minute of it where I've said, I'd rather be somewhere else or I wish I was doing somewhere else. And there's a huge desire to get better. And, and that's what, you know, we're hoping to do going forward. But, I, I think the the one bit of preparation that I had was just I was definitely someone who listened to the commentary. Like, you know, I think lots of people watch the action and, and whatever, but to me the commentators were enormous personalities in developing my love for wrestling. So hopefully that informed uh, the way I've approached it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, I said this to Rose and he didn't agree with me because I believe – you know, pro wrestling and commentating, it's like the music is the pro wrestling, okay? The lyrics is the like the commentating, and they have to be able to flow together. And, like, a good commentator can m- make a match so much more, like, spectacular. And, you know what I mean? But the, the same thing, what the performers are putting in the ring is what the commentators are working with. So, you know what I mean? Like, you see at a high level, you know, like a good commentator, like someone like a Jim Ross and stuff like that, knowing when to sort of, you know, the high spots and how to control that sort of stuff. That's the way I look at it. You know, Rose, when he was on, you know, said, no, I think that the whole song is happening in the ring. But for me, it's like, I think the commentary always adds, adds to the flavor of the match. Well, it's really interesting. I think one of the things you hear uh, lots of uh, sports commentators as to what makes a good commentator say things like don't, say things that people can already see right and and i think that uh that in certain sports is true but i think in wrestling there's an expectation that there is a level of knowledge and a descriptive knowledge that calls certain events as they occur so i think there is an obligation a little bit to call what you see but then if you can because of your vantage point and your vantage point is they generally give you a good view though at the Thunder Liger show was so successful, which was a uh, 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 collaboration between P- PWA and the Farley Dojo last December in 19 that they sold out the factory theatre. They had to put all the seats on the stage. We couldn't see the ring from where we were sitting. We could we ha- either had to stand up or call it off the monitors. But generally, you have a good vantage point, right? So yeah, yeah, we've got a good vantage point plus a monitor. So um, we probably see things uh, that um, uh, certainly the crowd might miss, but for the people who are watching on online or, or on delay, we're hopefully training in on things and helping them steer their eye a little bit around. And, of course, they're two different mediums. This is the thing that, you know, as I'm persuading friends and colleagues to come to shows and they come back, let me tell you, they love it so much. 
But, you know, a lot of people are disappointed. Well, actually, no, they're generally pretty pleased when they go, oh, I thought I'd hear you commentate, but I was delighted to hear you at a live show. I can't hear you. But, uh, but yeah. you know, but a lot of people expect to hear that. And I know it can. there are some promotions that do that. But, I mean, they really are two distinct things, a live wrestling show and then a, a wrestling show that's on a screen. And then, and I think we're definitely part of the second and in a minor uh, way it can be part of the first. And, you know, I'll immediately go to the highlight of when, I don't know, you may not be aware of this, but I'm, I'm quite a, a fan of a, a wrestler in PWA called Matthew Wahlberg. I, I, I like the cut of that guy's jib. And I think he's, I, I actually quite like him too, man. He's a cool dude. <laughs> And when he was uh, wrongfully denied a victory for the heavyweight belt against Caveman Ugg, at one point he did put Ugg through our announce table and I was I 10 that, centimetres yeah. from needing a shin transplant, let me tell you. Uh, oh. but, but you live for those moments and hopefully uh, uh, you're um, um, selling something to the, you know, to the crowd as well that they uh, don't see you as an impediment but hopefully uh, helping enhance their experience by... Your reactions. I mean, uh, I think one of the things the PWA referees do a brilliant job is, you know, emphasise the incredible things when they happen and uh, you know, provide discipline when they need to, and, and occasionally just step back and go, "Man, that was pretty bloody good." Yeah, like that. That that's the thing that I like about the overall product with PWA. Like a lot of it is, you know, when I came to that first show, wrist locks and pile drivers. I've been putting over PWA since then, and you know, I'd been to a PWA show a couple of years beforehand, um, and you know, going to the wrist locks and pile driver show, like I left that and had friends that are overseas going, "Hey, how was the the, the Aussie wrestling show?" Yeah, and I was like, "Let me," t I was like, "Let me tell you something about PWA, brother." And then I was, you know, like that. And I said that was on the level of any major promotion I've ever seen from in ring talent to production was like, you know, as far as like a, an independent wrestling promotion, which what every promotion in Australia is. Um, the thing was like completely different to what I'd seen from an, an Aussie wrestling promotion, but also the quality of it was just as good as like a ring of honor, or a, you know, new Japan for m my opinion. And that's what I went back and said. And, and, you know, I was sending people clips. I saw them on Twitter and Facebook and sharing them saying, guys, check this shit out. And, you know, a lot of people were just like, what the fuck? Like, this is, this is amazing. And well, yeah. the overall product is definitely you know, on a level which is just far beyond. And it's just where Australian wrestling is at and PWA being at the forefront of it, it's amazing. The first thing 